So Ben Feingold against today's Grandmaster, Dr. Jesse Cry. This was another U.S. Championship in Seattle, this one in 2003. And this particular game played January 10th, 2003. So for several years in a row, U.S. Championship was played in Seattle, Washington. Lately, it's been having been played in St. Louis, so. Uh, Fine Gold against Je Dr. Jesse Cry. We got another French defense by Cry. This time, the classical variation. And now the McCutcheon. And with the advance and h6. And now with pawn takes knight, we have Chigorin's variation of the French defense. And pawn takes bishop, pawn takes pawn, rook to g8. So pawn to h4 makes a lot of sense. And knight to c6. On to h5, he has to take the g-man now, or those pawns will be connected. Bishop to b5, and this move is unique. It's the first unique game, uh, unique move in the game right here, queen f6. So, the French defense, boy, I really... I've seen it played very effectively, but it's not something I would care for. It takes a long time to get these pieces into the game because of the structure here. Although I've played plenty of openings like that, so I don't know. <laughs> so bishop to d7. D Rose, welcome. Crown him with many crowns. The dentist's favorite hymn is Crown Him with Many Crowns. Now, there's another song written to the same melody called Soldiers of Christ Arise. Christ arise. And put your armor on. Stand in the strength which God supplies through his eternal Son. So a couple of different, I mean, um, uh, sets of lyrics for the same arrangement. Okay, bishop back to d6, and here comes pawn to h6. Okay, rook to g6 has to be played, because you can't play rook to h7. Wow, what a move. And pawn to h7, he castles just in time. Bishop takes knight, bishop takes bishop. Castles to the queen side. G4. Knight to E5. Bishop takes, pawn takes. Queen takes, pawn. Knight E2. Rook H8. Pawn F4. Now would be a good time to play en passant. And a good time to once again review the rules of en passant. When you have a pawn on the fifth rank, or in Black's perspective, the fourth rank, three steps away from home. One, two, three. And your opponent has a pawn on its starting square. 
that moves adjacent to your pawn using the two square pawn move rule. But when the two square pawn move rule was introduced, they also introduced the en passant rule to prevent players from using the two square move rule to evade the capture by an advanced opponent pawn. Therefore, you can capture that pawn as if it had only moved one square in the former fashion. And that's exactly what is played. It must be done immediately or you lose the opportunity. Pawn takes pawn. Now queen to g7. So after queen to a3, rook takes h7. Now black is looking pretty happy here. He sacks the a pawn for the h pawn. And after rook takes, rook takes, rook h6, rook g1. Pretty bold here on the part of Jesse Cry. A lot of ways to attack here. Queen A3. And now the rook drops back to defend the back rank. So, why can't the knight be captured? Why can't the knight be captured? After queen to f8 check, and king to d7, queen takes f7 check, And king has to go to d6 because of the rook. Then queen f8 check. And again, the king has to go out in front of his pawns because of the rook. <laughs> so he'd have to come out in front of his pawns. But then after rook g5 check, that forces the king even further out in front of his pawns. Let's see, can you play this check? Play this check. And if the king, king can't come back because of Queen F4 checkmate. So, but that's the, only, that's the only legal move other than blocking with your queen. Oh, you can come to E3 though. How about King to E3? I was thinking the only other legal move is to block with the queen, but can't come to C5. And all of these squares are covered by the rook. And these are covered by the pawns. So you could either go, you can't, if, um, king e5 is checkmate in one. What about king e3? Well, you're losing this. You're losing this, and then the king has to go to f2. <sighs> what a king journey. So the knight cannot be taken. Just in a nutshell. Oops. I went back too far. The rook has to defend against queen f8. Or its curtains. And then queen to d3. Pawn to b6. Pawn to 
Pawn to f4, queen to f6, queen to e3, kibishp, 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 that's it, kibishp, kibishp, that's it, I forget now, but kibish, and then p is the last initial. I finally figured out your your name. It's Kabish P. Thanks for the cheer, Kabish. Is it pronounced Kabish or Kibish or Kabish? What is it? Kabish number one, two, or three? Kabish, Kibish, Kabish. It's Kabish. Okay. Is it Kabish or Kabish? In a lot of languages, E is pronounced A, I is pronounced E. Kabish. You know what? Kabish. Do you have a live stream? Do you do live streaming? I was just thinking you could have Kibitzing with Kabish. Kibitzing with, has a nice ring to it. Kibitzing with Kabish. Kibitzing with Kabish. Kibitzing with Kabish. <laughs> has a nice little ring to it. Nice ring, and it's Chesik. So after rook h4, rook to f1. Bishop d7, pawn to c3, pawn to c5, sends the knight packing to c2, bishop to b5. Yeah, it's a good name for a stream. Kibitzing with Kibish. Kibitzing with Kibish. You've got, you've got it built right into your name. built right into your name. So rook to f2, queen to f5, pawn to b3, which is b3. Forget who it was who complimented me on my diction the other day. I'm constantly botching the pronunciation of English words, mostly on purpose. Like when I say computator instead of computer, or more betterer instead of much better. Pretending that my tongue has a mind of its own. Ladles and jelly spoons instead of ladies and gentlemen. Green things and salut salamanders instead of greetings and salutations. So knight e1. Attacks the bishop, which retreats to e4, king b2, rook to h1, pawn to a4, pawn to d4, queen to d2, rook to h3, attacking the c-man. Pawn takes... And now, super attack against the B man to get that rook into the king's face. Nice. So, knight to c2. Rook takes b3 check. And the knight is on c2 to serve as a sort of hiding place for the king. Now the question is... Put to the queen, which retreats to e1. Pawn takes d4. Queen to b4. Trying to worm in the way in, I'm guessing, here. Let's see. The super attack here. This threat here. I'm guessing 
either one of these could be foci. So the queen keeps an eye on both. A5. Super attack here. You can x-ray defend. Who sees the move? I'm sure you do. Rook B3. X-ray defending. B6. So queen takes pawn, queen takes queen, knight takes queen now. And now it's getting more simplex. Rook, oh, I thought he was going to check him. Instead he attacked the knight. Knight to c2, rook to c4, pin. King breaks pin, b2. Pawn takes a5. Should he have given up that pawn there? Did he need to give up this pawn? Okay, you've got the rook defending the knight. You've got the king defending the knight. Why not take the pawn here? And then you have only have to withstand these two. I'm not sure about the move king to b2 here. I don't know how necessary that is. Ben Feingold. Um... I mean, it might be irrelevant, but... Yeah, that's true. That's true. That's a good point. Um, Kabish. Kabish. The point Kabish is making here is, okay, you don't have to give up that pawn, but white can now force a simplification. This pawn doesn't have to be taken anytime soon. And so after just trading everything off, now you've got a two to one majority and black should easily win this game. So he has to try to keep his pieces on the board. So he plays king b2, giving up the other pawn. And then pawn to f5. e5. Knight e3, king, uh, rook b4 check, king a1. King c6, and we'll just blaze through these moves because we're, unless we get something really questionable or complicated. Rook c2 check, king d6, rook c8. Bishop to. Hey, that's a nice little emote there, Mr. Red. Pawn in the hand. You got three pawns and three hands. A pawn in the hand is worth two in the bush, they say. Rook to a8. Pawn to a4. a4. Pawn to f6. Rook gets behind it. King to b2. There goes the last white pawn. Rook a6, king e7, rook f8, excuse me, rook a7, king f8, knight g4, rook e6, rook a5, pawn to f6, knight takes, rook takes, rook takes, but that one last pawn, and we're going to blaze through here. That's going to be that very eventually. Nice technique here. And finally, he gives it up. 
he gives it up. There's nothing stopping this move here. Rook to a2, which is checkmate. Well, I guess you could throw in a check. But after block, what you gonna do? What you gonna do? If you take the rook, it's checkmate. And if you move the rook somewhere, it's checkmate. So nothing left. 